Hello and welcome to my office. Let me check to see if my phone is working. It's a new phone. Yep, it is. So this is my office. It's the first time I'm using this phone to make a uh, video. So if it doesn't come out any good, I'm just going to blame the phone, okay? Anyway, I know that on Friday I gave you guys a quick rundown of my technique for analyzing circuits. And to be honest, I don't think I did a great job of it. Uh, oh, by the way, you see my six screens there? Isn't that nice? Six computer screens. Anyway, I didn't do a good job of it, so I'm going to make a new recording and try to explain it in more detail and better. I'm also going to take pictures of these and post them on the um, class website, too. So anyway, here we go. We're going to start off by our circuit. And it's a simple circuit like this. I think I drew the same one up for you guys. We have two loops, loop one and loop two, and three resistors, resistor one, resistor two, and resistor three. Now, I like to make my eyes a little bit curved at the end like that, and like that, because that way you don't confuse them for L's. I'm sorry, for, for ones. You may confuse them for L's, but that gets a little bit more, well, whatever. Now, the three rules that we're going to use are the sum of the voltages in a loop equals zero the sum of the currents into a node equal the sum of the currents out of the node and Ohm's law okay now if we look at loop one we can see that it's gonna have Vn minus R, the voltage through R1 minus the voltage through R2 so that's zero equals Vn minus Vr1 minus Vr2 and if we use Ohm's law, we got those three things right there. Those are three very obvious things. VR1 is equal to I, 1R1, VR2, VR3. Okay, we can substitute those in, at least two of them in, and we get that zero equals VN minus I1, R1, minus I2, R2. Okay, that's pretty easy. Loop two, it's a little bit trickier because if you look here, and I've already, I've already written in the currents, and I've got arrows on them. And that's important uh, because that means that the because of the current being the opposite direction, then we have for loop two it's zero is equal to minus vr three plus vr two. So if if you think about it, that makes sense because here you're losing voltage because the current's going that way, and here the current is going the other direction. So you're gaining voltage, kind of, sort of. It's a negative of a negative. What that really means, too, is if you look at this, you say, well, that means that VR3 equals VR2. And we know that's true because it's a parallel circuit. Okay. The important thing is to watch those current directions. If you're going with the current, then the sign stays negative. If you're going against the current, the sign becomes positive. All right. Then we have one node. And that one was right there, and we can see that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. I1, I2, and I3. I have big fingers, don't I? Okay. So, right then, I can tell you we have enough to solve for anything we want, if we've given enough information. We've set up the problem correctly. What does that mean? Let's say we're given, this is typically what you'd be given in one of these kind of problems, is V in R1, R2, and R3. And we want to find I1, I2, I3, VR1, VR2, VR3. Now in reality, VR1, VR2, and VR3 are very easy. Because once we have I1, I2, and I3, we can just apply Ohm's Law. So we really are just looking for I1, I2, and I3. So let's start with I1. Well, from equation two, we know that, there's equation two for those of you who can't remember, we're going to rearrange those terms to solve for I1. And we do that in the next two steps, here and here. So we get that I1 is equal to 1 over R1 times Vn minus I2, R2. So what does that mean? Well. We know all those quantities except for I2. 
so we need to get I2 next. Well, I2, if we look at equation 5, that's the node equation, we can just rearrange that to say I2 is equal to I1 minus I3. All right. Well, that was easy. Oh, but now we need I3. But from equation 4, we get that we have I2 is equal, R2 equals I3, R3. Okay. And remember, that comes from Ohm's law here, too. All right. All I did was substitute in and rearrange the terms. So then we can solve for I3. I3 is equal to R2, R3. I get a little bit tilted. Times I2. All right. And then we can substitute that way back in. I'm sorry. Uh, into this equation right here. And we can solve that and we get that I2 is equal to I1, we still have I1, minus I3, I3 becomes R2 over R3 times I2. And then just rearranging the terms, we get that I2 is equal to R3 over R2 plus R3 times I1. Okay, now this is a lot of algebra and everything, but it's not really all that complicated. You just have to be careful. And to be honest, it took me at least one or two times to get it right, as you can see in the next step. <laughs> So then if we substitute all the way back here in this equation for I2, all we're going to do is we're going to substitute in for that quantity right there. We get that I1 is equal to 1 over R1 times Vn minus R2, R3 over R2 plus R3 times I1. Now, the great part about this is we have one equation and we only have one unknown, I1. So technically, we could solve this right here and you could just substitute in the numbers and then solve for I1 and you might get, you know, like I1 equals 1 over 100 times Vn minus, let's just say it's 5 volts, minus 7I1. Then you just have to rearrange the terms and solve for I1. That's probably what you should do, rather than what I'm going to show you next, because this gets a little messy. Because then if you try to solve it, and I rewrote it here, I1 is equal to that. I just distributed the R1, and then you bring the second term over here over to the other side you get i1 times 1 plus r2 or other blah 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 is equal to v in over r1 and finally you get this monstrous equation right here okay so what does all that mean hmm well it means that you probably should have just substituted in the known equate values all the way back here or even here if you really wanted to. Okay, at the, this one right here. Okay, so then once you find I1, well, then you can go all the way back to here. You've got I1, you've got R1, you've got R2, you can solve for R2. And once you have R2, uh, I2, you can solve for I3. And you're done. Now the nice part about this is it works on any circuit with just resistors. There's a more advanced version that works with capacitors and inductors too, but we're not going to get into that. That's a little bit too complicated. And it's also beyond the scope of the class. But if you're ever interested, I'll I'd be happy to show you. Alright, so anybody got any questions, let me know. Um, send me an email or something. Alright, I will see you in the physics lab. I should probably do that. I don't know if I'm upside down or not. Oh well.